if we're safe here. We don't know what these people are capable of. Well, I'm not ready to leave. I feel like I'm called to be here. Here. Hey Jeff. Hey John, what's going on? Not much, man. I like the background. Thank you very Thank much. You. I'm excited to talk to you today because this is my kind of movie. <laughs> because really? I'm I'm Generation X. So in the 70s, I mean, I grew up with mysterious monsters in search of, I mean, the golden age of paranormal science. So I have just been fascinated with any movie, anything to do with the Sasquatch. With, with Bigfoot, and I love any kind of twist on it. So you went gangbusters, and that is fine by me. That was awesome. <laughs> so I just want to say it, it's a, I, I really enjoyed it. I really did. Cool, man. Thank you. Yeah. You know, this has been like a, it's been a pretty like 50 50 type type thing. You know, when I, when I hear from uh, even friends, from, you know, from critics, uh, users, it's just been really, really interesting. You know, uh, yeah, I, I there was one guy that that sent me an interview that or that that uh, there's one guy that did a review and I thought it was a little unfair. I never do this, but I reached out to him and I was very nice about it. And then he and he got back to me and you know and it was it was kind. It was a kind like you know uh, correspondence between the two of us. But you know, and I think his his takeaway was like you know look the 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 bad outweighs the good in this one. I'm sorry. Better luck next time. And I was just like I don't you know you know, you know what I mean. It's just uh, when, whenever whenever you release a movie. There's just so much, uh, you, you never know how people are, are going to react to it. It's just well, first of all, going into a Bigfoot movie, come on, give me a break. Yeah. It's like, what are you expecting? Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah I, it's like, you're supposed to, first of all, have fun. I didn't know which way you were going to go with it. You know, you did some great twists on it. First of all, well, how did you update the Bigfoot legend? How did you make it your own? Because you did some things in this that were, that were pretty much, uh, pretty much new to me. Cool. Um, well, you know, Zach, the co-writer, and I, we've, we've been working together for a long time since my first movie. You know, we we both uh, had a fascination with cults, and I think we've both seen that that doc, uh, Wild Country. Of course, we, we saw Midsummer, um, and uh, and other movies. Uh, um, uh, what's what's the one about? Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna forget the name. Wicker but... Man. I thought of Wicker Man. That? The Wicker Man. The no, Wicker Man. No, no, the, it's the one. Molly. Uh, what is it? Uh, I think it had. I think it had. Um, one of the Olsons and I, for, I forget it was so good though it was everyone I, I forget about it but um but uh you know we we'd, we'd seen those films and then uh you know um you know I, I living in the, in the Pacific Northwest right it's kind of hard to avoid seeing Bigfoot everything everywhere like bumper stickers you know statues just erected just just because you know and and it's also this, it's Bigfoot country out here you know it's Bigfoot country and 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 there's there's sightings out here you hear about sightings all the time so it was just something that been in like in the periphery for for a long time so we started working on the script during the pandemic and we're just trading it back and forth and and trying to create uh ideas uh of the mythology of what this cult believes in and i we borrowed from from a lot of different places the taoism uh, catholicism buddhism and just kind of and then made up the, made up what what we needed to to fill up the the gaps to make it kind of all work and equate to something you know and i think it was Oh, uh, it was, I can't remember if it was Zach or myself that had the idea about like, you know, what, what does this couple want and what are they, you know, why are they here and why are they in such despair, you know? And so that kind of made, you know, um, kind of like the, you know, the regeneration of the forest and what that does for them and, and, and how that equates to the ending, just trying to make a, just trying to make it all work. Right. It's just like, a, you know, writing a script, kind of like a, a, like a big math problem, kind of, you know, yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and we made it, we try to make it personal if we could. Right, yeah. I love how you made Bigfoot a meat eater because throughout all of the legend, it's been these docile creatures that run away or they, uh, you know, you, they scare easily or they, you know, so not this time. I mean, your Bigfoot is, you know, not only mind control, you had some really great twists in this. I thought were really, <laughs> that were a lot of fun. Cool, yeah, yeah, the, like, like, like the metaphor, like the, the metaphysical aspect of it was, Right. It was pretty cool, and, and I, I went to I went to a Bigfoot uh, convention here in in the Northwest in Vancouver uh, about just right over the the bridge, 
about 15, 20 miles away. And I met a lot of folks folks who who had a, a metaphysical belief in, in Bigfoot and believe that that uh, all all types of things like, um, you know, with native origins and 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 that's that was something that was new to me that I hadn't heard of before and that, you know, Bigfoot could be a shapeshifter. Bigfoot could turn into a tree, you know, which was like a like a native legend, you know, that had a different name. Um, Squanichi, I think it was. Uh, and then um, and, and I just thought it was interesting, you know, like interdimensional telepathic you know if if this creature and if these creatures have been you know have been around for you know for centuries and we don't know no one's ever really quite captured one or seen a, a skeleton of one or, or or what have you that maybe that's because they have they have uh if they are real they have some uh some type of of powers you know some type of uh you know telepathic powers and, and whatnot control of the forest uh the, the protectors of the forest and I like I really like those ideas and of course it gave us a lot of uh, a lot of fodder to be able to play with for the for the for the film and the script. absolutely now we got to talk about the big food costume you know blowing the budget because it has to be convincing were there discussions on how to portray Bigfoot what he was going to look like and and all that because that's what everyone's looking for they you know he's front and center in this movie he's not hiding behind the tree like over here you know <laughs> <laughs> so was there a lot of discussion and bringing certain people to design the costume and all that because uh, I think it was fantastic. So the costume is, is is next level. It was it was uh it was pretty it was a pretty great uh, thing for us. Um, I, I met Greg Hale, um, the producer of the Blair Witch. I met him through the alumni association over at PSU. I don't think I've really like mentioned this to many folks, but uh, you know I, I had a call with the alumni association at PSU, Portland State University, where I went to, went to uh, where I went to film school, you know, and Greg, I think has gone and talking, has talked to the, uh, to the, to the students there a few times. Like he's really, he's really like, you know, for, for someone who's done as much as he's done, he's very, like, he's very kind, you know, very cool, um, you know, like not full of himself, just very grounded type guy, you know, since, since, uh, since, since somebody in the spirit, you know, we've, we've gone and watched a few horror films together and he watches, he watches everything. He's just a connoisseur of them. And he like, he doesn't hate on him either. He just kind of accepts him and like, you know, kind of, kind of loves them all. But um, he gave us, he gave us some, uh, you know, some things to think about things I'd never, I'd never thought about. Cause this, this is one of my first, this is my first creature feature, but he talked to me about creature motivation, you know, about the, like the motivation of the cult, you know, like what, how it all works together. And then, uh, and to top it all off, he, uh, he let us uh, use the suit made by spectoral, uh, uh, motion uh which he used in the film exists that he put out in 2014 so that's the suit uh and the suit uh probably you know costs more than the budget of our entire film you know and it looked uh, great man i was like Whoa, yeah that i mean it could look it could look like you know the zapruda film and zapruda uh not zapruda um uh the patterson film and uh and looks yeah. look really cheap or it can look i mean i was i saw that right away i mean that was not your run-of-the-mill you know heading over to 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 Lowe's and pick up stuff from the <laughs> and start sewing things together. No, it was pretty convincing. No. So we we, we 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 thought about going that route too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, we I you know I went to film school. You know, so we made my buddy and I uh, we made many a low budget horror films for ourselves, and he would do that, be in front of the sewing machine and styrofoam and and all that. So uh, you know, it's it's about the it's about the craft. You know, it's about the people behind it. Um, but tell me about a typical day of getting Bigfoot ready for camera. Was it a difficult thing? It was. It was because you know it was new to me. Carrie uh, Peterbaugh, who uh, who handled the suit, took care of the suit. You know, I didn't. You know, I didn't know there was so much upkeep that that uh, you know that went into these suits. You know, and uh, you know, you know, first of all, you have to keep it you know clean, sanitized. You have to you know keep keep bacteria from building up. You know, which can happen if someone's in that suit for eight hours a day. I mean. You know, there's I I never thought about that. It was it was the fall, but it was still uh, it was getting cool. But it was it was hot. It was pretty hot, definitely hot. You know, and and you're and you're uh you know what forty to fifty percent hotter in that suit than you are you know, outside of it, right? So we had to keep uh we had to make sure that there was a PA or somebody with uh, with Sean uh, Sasson who played uh played uh, Sasquatch and did did a great job. I I thought um yeah Sasquatch um, Wrangler, huh? <laughs> yeah, a Sasquatch Wrangler, exactly, exactly, and. And uh, so um, we we had two facial applications that, that were left from uh, spectral motion, and uh, and they were and the latex was getting a little old, and so you know Carrie had warned us about that. So and 
and uh, um, and you only get one use. You know, we tried to peel them off carefully, but but they but they were only going to last one time. So we really only had two days that we were able to get close ups on Sasquatch. For uh, for everything else, we used this. Uh, this this mask that was like the the long shot mask where we just which which was convincing enough and is the thing that we use most of mostly in the film where we just you know i kind of had holes in the eyes here so we just put you know some black makeup you know he looked like more like a raccoon sean more like a raccoon with, without it you know and he put on the mask and you couldn't you couldn't tell the difference but from about 15 20 feet away it looked uh it looked great it looked great that- so it would take about two and a half hours probably to put sean and makeup and everything wow mm-hmm. and, it, and it sounds like you shot this in your backyard literally so Right. I mean, it looks like I mean, it, right? You're from, I mean, not, not me. I mean, you're from the area. Is oh, what yeah. It's oh, like, yeah. yeah. So it sounds like you had a lot of locations in mind because shooting on location, especially like a forest, uh, it can be very challenging. Oh, it was super challenging. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah. We shot this in my backyard in Portland, you know, pretty much, you know, in a, That's big a, a country, right yeah. outside, <laughs> right outside of the area. Yeah. Right outside of uh, Portland at this area called Happy Valley. And uh, the, the owners of the property that it's called Pendarvis Farm. It's where they hold uh, Pickathon. Uh, I'm going there actually next uh, this this next weekend uh, weekend after next. It's a big it's a big singer songwriter uh, camping event festival event. It's it's lovely. It's 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 amazing. And and Sherry and Scott they were just they were just so lovely to let us film there. And it had kind of this kind of cult as sort of atmosphere to it anyhow. You know, like all the stick structures that that was already there. You know, that's that's all part of the structure. Uh, someone came and they built all that. You know, um, in, into the into the infrastructure of the of the venue, you know, and there's several different, and there's cages, there's, there's that big area where they hold the concerts. I mean, it was just, it was just kind of perfect, you know, and, and the house that Dean and Carla lived in uh, was about 30 minutes away, still in the same County. And, um, and, and in that area, that's a beautiful lush area. Those people, you know, they didn't even know that their ho- that, that, that their house was in the, uh, in the Oregon Film Commission uh, location database, they were just really it is, and we're like, yeah, we found you guys, and we we'd love to film here, and they're like, okay, sure, <laughs> yeah, you can, you know, and apparently that little area had had some, uh, had had some Bigfoot sightings, you know, uh, which is pretty cool, which is pretty cool, and I had a chance to go Bigfooting with a couple of Bigfooters before the film. I took, I took Greg Hale out with us too, which was pretty a pretty interesting experience too. I, I think the, the very first person I ever met that used Bigfoot as a verb. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I hadn't heard it either. I hadn't heard that. I hadn't heard of uh, you know, before I met. You that know, sounds somebody. cool. I want to do it. It was fun. It was yeah. a blast. It was, it was scary. It was like it was. I didn't know we, we were going to go at night. You know, oh. I was getting dark, and I was like, oh, we're, well, we go at night, not during the day. Okay, I'm more scared of mountain lions, and cougars than I am of uh, Sasquatch at that point. But it, there was, yeah, there was some interesting things that happened at night for sure. Sure, for sure. And, and you had a chance to screen it. Was it at the Miami Film Festival? Yeah, yeah. We, we premiered in Miami at the Miami Film Festival, uh, you know, which was interesting. You know, like I, I don't know. I you don't saw know with an audience, right? That's there. that's what's exciting. You got to screen it with an audience. What was the reaction? Oh, it was good. It yeah. was it was it was great. It was just interesting to screen it at in, in Miami. Uh, you know, like where there, you know, it's not. <laughs> it's you, no you know forest. I mean? yeah. yeah, yeah. There's no wrong, forest. It's all you know? swamp. Wrong way. It's a. It's it's the wrong creature. <laughs> the okay, right. swamp. Right. swamp thing, swamp thing, yeah, swamp thing. But, yeah. but, but what was cool though was that you know since there is there, there is like um, you know there there's a there's a Latin feel to this movie you know like not only with myself as, as a Latino but also you know the uh, a couple of the producers you know our, our Latin leads you know our, our leads are from Miami so it was that was pretty cool and it, and what I found is that we we had some support and some. Uh, and a little love from, from from the Latino audience, which I thought was pretty cool. And I think part of that is is not only just because of the, you know, because of the actors in the film, but there's also this spiritual aspect that I see, that I think like you know some Latin people can can relate to. You know, some people brought that up. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of Latin people like like myself, uh, you know, uh, grew up Catholic or uh, or you know something in that regard, Christian. You know, and there's there's a spirituality element to this film. You know, uh, I mean, on top of that, like the film, like we we try to not let it take itself too seriously at times, you know, um, and I and, and so sometimes it verges into camp and then comes right out of it. And it's it's and it's we're in something more grounded, something a little more serious, you know, but it kind of the film itself kind of goes in, in waves of taking itself seriously and not which is kind of interesting. Absolutely. Well, John, congratulations, man. Summoning the spirit. I enjoyed it. And I think a lot of people will, too. And uh, let's talk again soon. I really appreciate it. True, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me.